Afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Timothy Groth here, and I'm the chair of the Capital Region Food Program Board of Trustees. As you all have been told, this year is our 46th annual Holiday Fruit Basket Project. I pass it over to Maria I just want to say thank you general for hosting us again this year uh, and with that I'm going to introduce Maria Manis Payne show our chair of the holiday food basket project welcome back thank you for the returnees and unique people who are here uh, it's a great honor to chair this program Many of you know this is our 46th year, but I want to share something uh, we've told many of the volunteers already. The impact that the Capital Region Food Program has had on Concord and the surrounding 17 communities over the past 46 years equates to 3,300 tons of food at a cost or a value of about $4.8 million. We are an all-volunteer organization. There is no paid staff, no administrative costs. Every dollar raised goes to food. All the boxes we have are donated. The facility, thank you, General, is donated. We do strategic partnerships with a number of businesses and organizations, and we are able to continue in this vein of an all-volunteer organization. In 2008, the board decided to institute an award called the Capital Region Food Program Volunteer Hero Award. First two recipients were Irving Morrison and Frida Spiro, and since then we've had 10 other recipients. Nominations are uh, submitted to the board, and a special subcommittee reviews them, and they're based on recognition of an individual, longevity of association, unyielding commitment, demonstrated ability to leverage or secure support, and belief in the mission of the Capital Region Food Program. I would like to ask Charlie Bristol, and Leela Joy. Gotcha. Okay, so everybody, listen up. Charlie Bristol is an individual who has over 25 years of involvement with the Capital Region Food Program. Leela Joy is an individual with over 20 years with the Holiday Food Basket Project. Charlie first became involved when the Vice Chair of our board, Harriet Hallecky, suggested that he would be a good board secretary. He has been a constant anchor with the board ever since. When Charlie retired, he had more time on his hands and became a key member of the Holiday Food Basket Project. He truly is an ambassador of the program, sharing information and encouraging friends, neighbors, and colleagues to get involved. Charlie has been a reliable, consistent member of the board, documenting and archiving the board's activities. He always speaks highly of the program and the public and continues to work through the program to help alleviate hunger in the greater Concord area. Lee has played an integral role in the Holiday Food Basket Project as the floor supervisor for the construction of standard boxes. <laughs> His ability to inspire a shared vision among the volunteers and floor captains has been essential during times when we've had experienced operational challenges. He models the way for the floor captains and general volunteers, reminding them that it is more than filling boxes. It is helping our neighbor in need. Lee has been a reliable and consistent member of the Holiday Food Basket team with his oversight of standard preparation. He has offered suggestions over the years for enhancement purposes. He is an essential part of the Holiday Food Basket project success and continues to work through the program to help alleviate hunger in the greater Concord area. It is with our great honor and pleasure to recognize you two individuals for your commitment to our program. You don't like to be in the limelight, so you can go. <laughs> I'm such a bad person. Um, I have the honor this year to introduce 
Pastor Terry Donovan O'Dell. And she will be doing the blessing. We always have every year a representative from the religious community to come in, bless the work. Uh, in the past, we've had representatives from the temple, from the Greek Orthodox Church, from the Catholic Church, from all over. Because we know hunger is blind. It doesn't matter what your religion is, what your gender is, you know, how old you are, it impacts everyone. So with that, Terry, would you please? Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm, uh, as Maria said, Pastor Terry. I'm a freelance, ordained, interfaith minister in the greater Concord area and beyond. And as an interfaith minister, I, I don't align with any religious traditions. I certainly respect each and every one of them, the, the core of which centers on compassion, and justice, peace, and love. While I also walk with people that are simply making an intentional search and are seeking something spiritual. It is my honor and my privilege to stand here today and offer a blessing upon this community outreach of 46 years and the fruits of its labors. Let's take a moment to center ourselves and remember those who have gone before us. For in their loving, and in their living, they paved the way for just such a moment as this when generosity and kindness, love and compassion abound. When humanity moves in ways it is truly meant to be, bringing forth goodness and light. You know, light is all around us this time of year. December abounds with many different festivals of light, solstice, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, and in such a diverse community as ours, many different customs are celebrated. They are celebrated and enjoyed. They bring people together to share food and family time. And in the midst of such festive times, this community, drawn together by compassion and needing to share, has been consistently aware that not everyone <coughs> enjoys the light of plenty and for 46 years has endeavored to spread light and love through this holiday program, enabling people to celebrate and not merely survive another holiday. And as I reflected on this and what I might share, more and more I was drawn to one of my favorite topics, the universality of Christmas. While certainly a religious holiday for many people, Christmas is also a festive celebration for many outside of a religious context and therefore serves to connect us all with universal goodness. There is a soul and a spirit to this time of year, it seems to me. And I think it brings about kindness in new and different ways. A warmer presence with each other if we do not let stress drive us. Maybe it prompts our better angels to be more alive and well, so to speak. I love that it is centered so much on children and trying to make sure all children everywhere are honored and remembered. And touching the child within all of us, perhaps we can be more playful and fun-loving in a world grown serious and sometimes very scary. Crafting my remarks, I found these words from an unknown source but meaningful for all of us here today. I adapted them a little bit. What is Christmas? The young child asked the old woman. Her answer spoke to all. Christmas is tenderness for the past, courage for the present, hope for the future. It is a fervent wish that every cup overflow with blessings, rich and eternal, and that every path may lead to peace. Beautiful words for all of us to hold on to. And so we pray. Oh, great mystery however we might imagine you or understand you or even struggle with you, be here with us now in ways each one of us will clearly feel and understand. We ask blessings upon this gathering and its laborers, upon the food about to be delivered, all those who have generously done their part, from sowers of seeds to those about to transport, and all the many hands in between bringing such abundance to those awaiting its delivery 
with gratitude. Amen, and with kind hearts and tender spirits, we too are deeply grateful. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. We are very fortunate this year to have Governor Sununu with us. Thank you for oh, being here. You. Sure. Uh, well, <laughs> Whatever you want. Now go. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. It is great. Um, the snow is coming down, right? That's a good sign. Christmas is really here. It's really happening. Um, it was kind of nice. I'm not sure uh, when I got out of the car, the couple of gentlemen were uh, shoveling the driveway. I said, how's it going? And they, I just heard, it's a blessed day. And it is. It is great. Um, the fact that you guys are here giving your time and effort, uh, this isn't just like a few families here and there, right? This is like thousands of families and thousands of individuals. Uh, we know that'll, that'll benefit from what you guys are doing. We talk a lot about service and a lot about volunteerism in the state, right? We're a state of local control and community and kind of relying on our friends and neighbors and coworkers to get folks through tough times. Uh, and so what you're doing is just, it's absolutely incredible. And we've, this is the time of year, again, when we spend a little extra time out with some of the individuals and families that need a little extra help uh, in a variety of different ways, right? And it's not just here in, the, in, in, uh, in Concord or, or on the seacoast or out in Keene or up in Grafton uh, or the North Country. It's really everywhere. I mean, New Hampshire's doing really well right now, but we always have to remember that when, even when things are going well, at any given time, you have about 10% of the population that is, that is really food insecure. And that is a real big issue in terms of making sure that we're giving, you know, what we can of ourselves uh, to get folks through, through some of these tougher times and then helping them uh, get on a better path for them and their families. And in New Hampshire, it works really, really well because we do have this kind of ingrained community spirit here. So you guys, have, I just cannot thank you enough on behalf of everybody, setting a great example. Um, this is definitely one of the bigger uh, projects that we have going in the state, especially this week. And the timing just, just couldn't be better. So uh, Christmas is, is definitely coming. We have all these different camp, you know, opportunities, right? It's like the, uh, the giving month, right? I don't know, like my mailbox is inundated with what folks can give if they can give an extra five dollars here or give an extra toy for toys for tots there or donate some time uh, wherever it, it, it might be in their community um, it's really great because because things are going so well everyone does have a little extra you know discretionary income and I we push them if you can give ten dollars give 15 right if you can give 25 give 45 right we're always pushing to do about 110 percent of what we think we can do and when we do that really really good things happen so we cannot thank you enough for donating the time um, it impacts so many, so many families uh, at such an important time of year. So thank you guys very much. Mayor Boulay usually joins us, but unfortunately he was called away, so he couldn't be He's here. shoveling. He's shoveling. He's shoveling. He's, now what he's, he's doing shoveling, making sure the streets of Concord so are, are clean are so we can get the boxes exactly where they need to go. Yeah. He's out there making sure it's going to happen. Great. That's great. But he sends his best and thanks you all for the work that you've done here. I just want to close. Um, we have a lot of other people here that have made significant impacts for our community. Sylvia Larson, um, Executive Counselor Belinsky, and you know, all the rest of you. You make a difference. It doesn't matter if you have a title or not. Spending the time makes a difference. And one of the things that you need to know is we did the exercise to figure out the Capital Region Food Program. We spend $175,000 a year on food. If we were to pay for all the in-kind services and donations that we receive, we would have to raise another $350,000. That speaks volumes about the commitment that the community and the public at large have for one another and for this program. So we thank you. Thank you very much and get back to work.